glory. You know, I don't know if you heard, but uh, we, we, we shared this the other day in our, one of our meetings. Uh, I'm sorry, did I say Mark? Good. I'm a little hazy right now, so. It's good wine. <laughs> Let's see, Mark, Mary, Matthew, oh, there we go. Okay. Um, during a worship, uh, I mean, the glory of God hit, and I was so, anyways. Hallelujah. Thank you, Papa. Um, one of the girl, a couple of girls had visions. Katie had a vision, and this other woman had a vision. And, and she didn't tell us uh, after the service. She said she saw a cloud of, of glory. And the cloud opened up like a window, and the face of Jesus was there. And he was looking into the, into the ministry. And he turned his head and he said, Father, look at how my church is worshiping me. I'd say, you got his attention. See, if we live to get his attention in everything we do in righteousness and in his presence and in worship, not looking for attention of man, who cares? We want God's attention. See, because we want to be close to him, and he wants to be close to us. But there's things that people do that cause distance. Long distance relationships. Not close. Where you know, see, when you have a real close relationship, you don't have to hear his voice. You know. There's an inner no witness. You know what pleases him and displeases him. He doesn't have to tell you to do this or do that. You know. Why? Because you live a life of surrender. That means he's always leading you. You're not waiting for something to help you being led. Amen? So there is a place of wait. Amen? You're waiting for him to come and get you, to move you. But we don't move ahead of him. We wait on him. Amen? And in this place, but what a blessing, I'm telling you. When I heard that, man, I had chills up and down my spine. Father, let me show you the church that's worshiping me. Hoo-wee. Let me show you the church. This little place. See, it's not about how big you are. It's your heart. It's how much you want him. <laughs> Why? Because you're the one who draws the presence of God. Not the bands, not the music. You do. Through your worship, through your praise, through your, in other words, that reverence and honor of who he is. And the more his presence comes, the more his glory comes, because we go from glory to glory, the more you know who you are. Your identity begins to increase of who you are. And again, that's the first thing the devil comes to steal is your identity. He wants to compromise it, and he does it. That's why people backslide. That's why they go back to the world, because they fall in survival mode. Just like the Matrix. Anybody seen the Matrix? Remember when the dude said, man, he was a, Judas was a betrayer, right? He was a Judas in the Matrix movie. What did he want? He wanted steak and sex and everything else. He wanted all the things of lust in the world. He was willing to give up his position. He sold his birthright. Amen? Mark 8, 34, please. When Jesus had called the people to himself, say himself. Yeah. With his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him what? Deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Deny himself. Deny your self. Deny your self. I mean, <laughs> that means you got to deny your survival self. Amen? Your flesh. you got to surrender your life, your way of life to Christ all the way. Deny yourself. And then he says, take up the cross, right? Pick up the cross. It means you got to fight in spirit. If you pull the sword out of the ground, what does it become? A sword. You got to fight. You got to be a fighter. You got to learn to fight. 
And then you can be led, and you be led, you can follow by the leading of the Spirit in a personal relationship with Christ. Amen? So he says, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow. For <clears throat> whoever desires to save his life will lose it. People that aren't trying to save themselves live in survival, not surrender. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in his glory of his Father with the holy angels. Wow. So we need to be coming to a place where we have a personal relationship with Christ. That means the, in the anointing. What is the anointing? The eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. All packed into a body, prepared, that came into this world that we may see the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. The anointed one and his anointing. Amen? Hallelujah. So he's looking for, a, in other words, his eternal presence, his power, his truth, his relationship with each. We want to have a relationship with his presence, with his power, and with his truth. Amen? We should love every part of it. As disciples, we should be, have the same mind, the same desire. That's discipleship. Because once you learn these things, then you pass it on. That's discipleship. That's why Jesus came to duplicate himself. Amen? But see, there are people not willing to learn. They're not willing to pay the price. <laughs> Go to Matthew 7, verse 13, please. Resurrender is a place of return. Return to what? Return to the right path. Return to righteousness. Return to the character of Christ. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Enter by the what? narrow gate didn't say wide for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to what destruction and there are many who go in by it many go in by it because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life and there are few who find it narrow some of us got to go in sideways you know <laughs> Glory. He says what? Beware of what? False prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Fruits, desires, words. What do they desire? Amen? You will know them if they live a life of surrender or survival. You'll know them. You'll know them by their fruits. Although some of them are granola, nutty and fruity, but, you know. But you'll know them by their fruits. <laughs> Is everybody okay? <laughs> now listen. Because this is so important for me and you right now, because we need to know people's fruits. We should be fruit inspectors. Amen? You don't have to judge them. You're just inspecting their fruit. Because it says don't associate with those who got stinky fruit, rotten fruit. Bad company corrupts what? Good habits. Wow. Verse 16, you will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree which represents spirit bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. And a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, or can a bad tree bear good fruit? Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. You will know them. You'll know these politicians that promote abortion. You'll know them by them promoting same-sex marriage. You'll know them by what they promote. And the people that vote for them will be judged the same way. You will be condemned with everyone that you have voted for that promotes the things that God hates. Don't let that fool you. Well, I'm a Christian. You ain't a Christian. You would have voted for that way. You're a liar and a deceiver, and you've been taken captive by the powers of darkness. Amen? Did you ever get across a Christian, so boldly Christian? I believe in Jesus, but I don't believe the Bible. 
Well, how stupid can you be and still breathe? In fact, they ain't going to breathe too long. Then they fall into all kinds of trouble. You know, I've seen atheists. I'm an atheist until trouble comes. Oh, God, help me. But I don't believe in God. Oh, <laughs> who are you calling out then? I mean, you know, people are so stupid in those areas. They've been taken captive. You know, Satan's greatest weapon is what? Deception. His power is what? Fear. Man, we got to let people know. Sometimes you got to slap the hell out of someone to make room for heaven. Hello? Jeremiah 17, verse 5. Thus says the Lord, curse is the what? The man who trusts in himself and a man and makes his flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. Why did he depart from Because he's in survival mode. His heart probably was never, you know how many believers are still never come out of survival? They're still, and, and never reached surrender yet? Verse 6, for he shall be like a what? A shrub. That's pretty dried up. In the desert, that's even worse. <laughs> and shall not see what? When good comes, because they are blinded. They can't see it. They miss it every time. Every time God tries to rescue them, they miss it. Because they're relying, they're in survival mode, not surrender. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, which is not what? Inhabited. That's a nasty place and a terrible place to live. Verse 7, but blessed is the man who what? Trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a what? A tree, which we just talked about. Planted by the what? Waters, that's living water. Which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear. Aha, has dominion over fear. Why? Because he's drinking of the river of life. When he comes, when trials come, when tribulations come, when disappointments come, he won't fear. He won't react and go into survival mode. He'll stay surrendered. But its leaves will grow, will be green, and will not be anxious. Oh, my God. In the year of the drought, anxious. Anxiousness is fear. That's when the enemy comes and pushes you. Nor will cease from yielding fruit. It says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the thoughts and the minds, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the what? Fruit of his doings. Nobody escapes. But I've been a believer 39 years. Yes, and you're still in survival mode. Again, we have to re-surrender. All the time. No matter what's going on, resurrender, resurrender, get back in that position. You find yourself, man, you know when that struggle starts. You know, you do the take, left, right, left, right, right, left, up, down, all of these takes. You're wondering what to do. I don't do it. Who do I call? What are, <laughs> Survival. Finally, the Holy Spirit comes by and says, yo, did you forget me? Oh, where'd that voice come from? Holy Spirit. Surrender. That's why he says, what, cast your cares upon me for I care for you? That's why the, the pathway is difficult. It's narrow. Why? Because people are carrying loads of stuff they can't get through. You got to drop your luggage. You can't take those things in that narrow gate. Amen. But it's, you don't know what I'm going through. I don't care. You keep holding on to those things you're going through. You ain't getting through that gate. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hebrew 10:32. You know, we're, we're not done. God's not done shaking everything. There's still other things going to come. But we're protected. Just don't get on the boat of survival. Amen? Even though sometimes the ship seems to be sinking, it ain't going to. 
Just don't don't get off that boat or survive and get on that. What you call, what they call it? What they call those boats? Those survival boats, uh -huh. rescue boats, lifeboats. That's what they're lifeboats. They lie. <laughs> they ain't lifeboats. Not in the spirit. The devil always shows up with a lifeboat. Hi, come on in. People that look at the bottom, right one. It's open. Everybody jumping in the lifeboat from the main ship. Hallelujah. In the depths of deception. Hebrews 10, 32. But recall the former days in which you, after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with sufferings. Apparently while you were made a spectacle, both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. For you had compassion on me, and my chains and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. That's heaven bound. Survivals. Survivalists never look at heaven. They only look at temporary. People that live a surrendered life and resurrender are always looking heavenly bound. Amen? Oh, yes. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, if you have completed the assignment God has given you, you may receive the what? Promise. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but those who believe to saving of the soul. Amen. Again, we need to come out of the survival and to surrender. So we need to re-surrender, re-surrender, no matter what's going on. No matter what your emotions tell you, <laughs> no matter what your flesh tells you, no matter what the bank tells you, <laughs> no matter what your boss tells you, praise God. Ezekiel 33. Therefore, you, son of man, Say to the children of your people, the righteousness of the righteous man shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. Hallelujah. Does everybody get it? But I've been a good boy or a good girl all these years, but I fell into fornication last night. Bummer. It ain't rescuing you. All your righteousness is not going to rescue you. In fact, it's been all removed. It's been stored in heaven. But you get an opportunity to stay, start over again. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall because of it in the day that he turns from his wickedness. Nor shall the righteous be able to live because of his righteousness in the day that he sins. When I say to the righteous that he shall surely live, but he trusts in his own righteousness and commits iniquity, None of his righteous works will be what? Remember, it's wiped clean. But because of the iniquity that he has committed, he shall what? Die. Again, when I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, if he turns from his sin and does, not, does what is lawful and right, if the wicked restores the pledge, hello, gives back what he has stolen, and walks in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live, he shall not die. And none of his sins which he has committed shall be what? Remembered against him. He has done what is lawful and right, he shall surely live. All glory. He shall surely what? Live. Yes. Uh, he's going to what? According to their life of surrender. Amen? In other words, he, he re-surrendered the other day. He got back into place. He returned. Listen, it doesn't matter what you've gone through. It doesn't matter what mistake you've made. It doesn't matter what sin you've done. Just get the heck out of it. Stop it! That's where you get buried alive. Amen? Just stop it. James 1.
Now, you've got to believe and accept that God has forgiven you. Now, everybody reaps what they sow, amen? Even when you repent, you're still going to reap. But God will turn that to the good, amen? You're going to still reap. You're going to, what's the reaping going to do? He's going to train you. He's going to train you. He usually brings you to a place where you can be retrained or trained up so you can get resurrendered. Amen. James chapter 1, verse 2. Let's count it. Let's speak it. <laughs> My brethren, count it up. All joy if, if you fall into trials. When you fall into trials. There ain't no ifs in God. Not that the testing of your faith produces what? Patience or endurance. But let the patience and endurance have its what? Now listen, endurance, does that mean you're going to go into a surrender mode or survival? Surrender. Hello. So when you're surrendering, patience is enduring. You're waiting. Amen? You're not surviving. You're surrendering. You're re-surrendering. So in this surrendered mode, what's going to happen? It's gonna, that it, you may be perfect in what? So let it have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking what? Nothing. You ain't going to lack nothing. Listen, if God knows that you know, you know him, you know he's faithful to complete what he started, you know that he's ordering your steps, you know it. You know he's opening the doors or him shutting the doors that are not. You know it. You know that you know by your knower. Amen? You're going to get it all. Everything's coming. Nothing will be withheld. Everything is coming. Now, survival says, I need to know. Surrender says, your time, Papa. You know exactly the perfect timing I need it even though I really would like it now. <laughs> but you know what? I'm, I'm going to die, and I'm going to wait before I kill somebody. You know? <laughs> Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? <laughs> Let's go a little further. Hosea 14. You know, there are times when the Spirit is saying, listen, you need to move now. And that's where that relationship is. You know, you need to move on something now. Maybe you need to repent about something that you didn't, or you need to restore something that whatever, and this and that, whatever, you know. And that's where you have to be careful because you don't want to be out of God's timing. If you're standing in the middle of the street and the Holy Spirit says, get out of the way of that car coming, you better get out of the way. Amen? <laughs> I mean, there are some people think, I need to pray about everything. No, you need to know about everything. Amen? And that's not going to happen without relationship with the knower. The Holy Spirit is the knower of all things. Right? Verse 1. Let's speak it together. O Israel, return to the Lord your God, for you have stumbled because of your iniquity. Take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, take away all iniquity. Receive us graciously, for we will offer the sacrifices of our lips, which is what? Praise and worship. Amen? A cereal shall not save us. We will not ride on horses, nor will we say any more to the Work of our hands, you are God's. For in you, the fatherless finds mercy. He says, I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely, for my anger has turned away from him. I will be like the dew of, to Israel. He shall grow like a lily and lengthens his roots like Lebanon. His branches shall spread. His beauty shall be like an olive tree and his fragrance like Lebanon. Those who dwell under his what? Shadow the most high shall what? Return. Resurrender. They shall be revived like grain and grow like a vine. Their scent shall be like the vine of Lebanon. In other words, you will carry the presence and the essence 
and the fragrance of Christ wherever you go. In a life of what? Surrender. Resurrender. Look at everybody falls into it. I don't care how spiritual you think you are. Amen. I don't, I don't care if you can memorize the, pray, the word of God in every page number. Everybody will st sometime make a mistake. Amen. But don't let the enemy condemn you. Come out of that. Let me tell you, guilt is a killer. The enemy loves us. Pound people with guilt. Well, you did this. I mean, man, he, you know, and sometimes we give him the bat. Go ahead, beat me up. It's amazing in how the deception of the enemy can pull people right out of position, out of the spirit, into the flesh, and begin survival and forget about surrender. Amen? That's why he says forsake not to assemble. We need to remind each other of it. Hang out with those who are faithful. No, man, you're in survival mode again. Come on out. Get in the spirit. What you fighting for? They're beating air for nothing. Trust God. Rest. Trust. Wait. He's going to bring it. He's going to make a way where there seems to be no way. That's why that scripture is He'll make a way where there seems to be no way. No way. Yahweh. Amen. Praise God. First Thessalonians 4. We're servants of the head of all military operations. This is training for reigning. Amen? Glory. First Thessalonians, I believe, chapter 4. Hallelujah. And verse 1. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you to the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your what? Your sanctification. Ooh. Can you live a survival mode and be sanctified at the same time? No way. You're fleshed out. Does everybody get it? You must live a surrender to be sanctified. Amen? That you should abstain from sexual immorality. That each one of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter. Because the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness but to what? In holiness. Therefore, he rejects this, does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Wow. Hebrews 12, 25. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke from on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. Now, this is powerful because he's talking about, you know, in the area of shaking, what's he doing is exposing those who have a genuine faith and those who don't have genuine, those who are generic, amen, and those who are genetic. Those are living in a survival mode, and those are living in a surrendered mode. All of this is being shaken. What's it for to awaken? So did you find out where you're at? So we can get resurrendered into the place and position, so we can come into a pl full place of trust, no matter what's going on. You know, even when you, if you make a mistake, let's say you make a wrong choice, how many know God can turn it around? But because you're in surrender 
You're not in surrender mode. You're in survival mode. Everything is a mistake. Hello? Let that penetrate for a second. <laughs> You're in survival mode. You live from the present. When you're in surrender mode, you live from the future. You're living out of the promises of God. Amen? Survival keeps you bound in this realm. We're not from this realm. We're in it, but we're not from it. We've been born out of it. So when you're in surrender, you live from the future. When you're in survival, you live here. Everything's about me, myself, and I. Do you believe that you're a new creation in Christ? Every day, every moment, every minute. And old things pass away and all things become new. That means you're walking away from yourself every day, all the time. All the time. Amen? You're walking away from the things that entangle you in the spheres of this world. Always walking away. Why? Because you're living a life of surrender. You're walking away from survival that entangles you. Go to 2 Timothy 3 and verse 1. But, but know this in the last days, perilous times will come. Is there perilous times? We all know that. For men will be lovers of the what? Themselves. Are they in survival mode or surrender? Survival. This is a group of survivalists. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, that's control over self, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They have a form of godliness but denying its power. And it says from such people turn away. Don't associate. Don't associate. Amen. Turn away. Glory. Let's go to Romans 8 now. 28. We know that what? All things work together for good to those who what? Love God. Now wait a minute. He says if you love me or what? Obey me. To those who are called according to his purpose. Now let me explain something. We have a call. We have a purpose and a destiny. We are called to battle. Amen. We're called to battle. Our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. And our destiny is to infiltrate the world system and bring Christ everywhere. We have a call, a purpose, and a destiny. And amen. Again, that coordinates with deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. We have a call to battle. Our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. And our destiny is to infiltrate the world system and bring Christ. Whether it's healing, deliverance, whatever, and gospel, and discipleship. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Verse 29. For whom he foreknew, he also what? Predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also did what? He called. He invited. Whom he called, these he also justified. Whom he justified, these he also glorified. Wow. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, what? Who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us. Oh, how shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword or problems? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are what? more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. It's God's love towards us. It's constant. It's our way. 
whether we choose to obey or not. In other words, if you live a life of surrender, you're always in love with God. When you live a life of surrender, you're in love with yourself. Um, a survival, amen? Survival brings you to you. Surrender brings you to Him. Now I'm going to close in Proverbs 3, verse 5. Don't be taken by all deception and all the things that are happening in the world. Amen? Every, everything in the world, in fact, we have a word that was given for 2023, and it talks about the, the crossover, because everything, it's a year of crossover. Because everything right now, the world is sinking sand. Why? Because they do not build on the oracles and the tools from eternity. They don't build on the truth. So they can't build bridges. They can't build bridges over sinking sand. Amen? But you and I can. That's how we avoid all traps. We build over everything that the enemy tries to cause us to stumble. If you're walking in that place of surrender and building. It says, he who hears my words and does them, amen, is a wise man. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Let's speak it. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. And all of your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. There is a relationship, amen? Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as the father, the son, in whom he delights. But happy is the man who finds wisdom, and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver, and are gained in the fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Wisdom. Wisdom. We need wisdom. We need discernment, and we need understanding. Something we need to ask for every single day. Amen? So know this, that in this, he says, well, trust in him. Lean on him. Acknowledge him. When you find yourself falling into that place of <laughs> survival mode, stop. You know when that stress comes. Amen? You know it. All of a sudden, oh. It's the presence of a spirit coming up. Hey. I'm here to help you. He's lying. Amen? He's lying. He's just looking for access. Praise God. Don't let him. If he's knocking, don't answer the door. We are in a time of trials and tribulations right now. There's a great shift. We're in a holy shift, actually. There's a transition that's going on, and God is regenerating his people. He's awakening them more. He's bringing them more to a place of sensitivity to the things of the Spirit. We must have prophetic insight so that we can see. We must live from the future, not from the past or from the trials and tribulations or the guilt and condemnation of the world. Amen? We live from the future in His presence, in the anointing, in His love, and in His glory. Amen? Be a sign and wonder to the world. It's important. Why? Because they're going to know you by your fruit. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I pray for each and every one here today that you would seal the word that's been imparted from them, from your throne room into them with the blood of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Let it grow and bear fruit for your glory, Father.